Hello everybody, it's Howard Smith here, and you join me at DCC Concepts with Richard Brighton. Hello! So uh, Richard, a familiar face, uh, you'll have seen him on all of the DCC Concepts um, events, and uh, obviously a familiar face in store as well. Now, why are we here today, Richard? We're here today because we have a fantastic new product, Howard. This is ESP Aegis. So this is our new wire-free control system for the NCE power cap. So the NCE power cab, just mm -hmm. to recap on that, uh, has been around, what, for about 15 years or it's so? It's been around for quite a while. One of the most popular DCC control systems on the market, very popular in the North America, I know for a fact, because I see it all the time in videos. Talk us through some of the functionalities, because I think it's quite important to talk about this before we come to why you've created a this, wireless yes. version for it. Because, let's face it, if I wanted to now, I can control a layout on my phone. You could. Um, so, the NCE Power Cab is perhaps the most popular starter system available. Uh, it's fully functional, which is fairly unique among starter systems. So you can get starter systems from some of the locomotive manufacturers, but they don't have full functionality. You don't have full 28 functions, you don't have a programming track, you don't, you know, there's various things you can't do with them. This is a starter set, which comes in around 200 to 250 pounds from your favorite retailer, um, that you can take home, plug in, and it works, and you have access to everything that DCC can offer. And it's widely available, isn't it? Yes. I mean, and the other thing is that the retailers all know that as soon as they get stock of this from NCE, within a week or two, they'll be sold out. So it, it does sell very, very well. It's very popular in the UK, very popular in the US and Australia. Off the top of your head, how many users uh, would you say in the UK have NCE? Tens been? of thousands in the UK, at least. Just because of what I know what our retail partners have sold and what we've sold. Um, so yes, there's, there's an awful lot of people using NCE PowerCab, and universally, if you go on the forums and you get these people who say, um, you know, I'm starting DCC, what do I need to buy? The most popular recommendation by far is NCE PowerCab mm. above everything else. So if we just go through the functionalities yeah. briefly, very tactile. It's one of those systems that you don't actually need to look at the uh, the locomotive you're driving while you control its speed because you can feel it there on, on the thumb. Yeah, I mean, the, one of the key benefits is the tactile nature of a handset like this. You mentioned earlier that you could, if you wanted to, control your layout with your mobile phone. Absolutely, yes, you can. But to control the layout with the mobile phone, every single time you make an adjustment to loco speed, loco direction, lights, etc., you have to stare at the screen every single time you do that. While denying the incoming phone call. <laughs> Um, so, yes, there are inconveniences. Um, apart from everything else, mobile phones are intrinsically expensive items and you don't want to necessarily be using them on the workshop where you can drop them and break them. Yeah. So, this is a nice bit of kit. Um, in terms of operation, the NCE Power Cap has an awful lot going for it. There are a few shortcomings that we can improve on. So, one of them is it's a 1.8 amp system. So on a small layout like the one we're using here, 1.8 amps is absolutely fine. When I start loading that with more accessories, lights, sounds, etc., we start putting a constant load on the system. Now, you may be familiar with Alpha Meter, which mm -hmm. is our meter system to show how much power is being used. We've got one here with one loco on the layout and the point motors and a few ground signals. This is using 0.3 amps. Now, if I put a couple of sound locos on there, if I put some lighting on my platform, then you can see how we can quite quickly build to a static load, let alone operating, yeah. which is getting close to the limitation of a starter system. So that's one thing we need to look at. Let's increase the power. The second thing we need to look at is that NCE is brilliant at programming locos and you can do it on the built-in program track feature, which means you have full access to all the decoder functions. However, it doesn't have a separate program track output on the system. So you don't have a part of your layout which is for programming locos. So that mm. means every time you use the programming track function, you either have to have some sort of switching arrangement where you can switch the track power between main layout and programming yeah. track, or you have to take everything off your layout 
and leave only one loco on there which then can be read by the uh, handset. The last thing we need to look at really is that the NCE doesn't have any built-in overload protection. It relies on its power supply. So a 1.8 amp power supply will supply, if regulated, only 1.8 amps to the layout. That means that if you get a low level short or you get a motor with a problem or a loco or a decoder with a problem, it can effectively draw 1.8 amps from that power supply. Mm. And the power cab won't stop that. It won't recognize the increase in load on the layout and say, mm, there's something odd going on there, yeah. better just to be careful. On the programming track, if you put a decoder into a loco that isn't quite wired correctly or isn't quite set up properly or there's a problem on the loco, it could potentially still pull 1.8 amps through the system onto the programming track. It smells track. like somebody's cooking some chips. <laughs> so it needs some sort of protection on that front. Yeah. And let's make no bones about it, this is a starter set. Yeah. It is never going to have everything out of the box, but there are things that we can very easily add and when we were making the Aegis system to make this system wire-free so that I can walk around my layout room without being tethered, there are some things that we thought would be good to add at the same time to make it a more functional product. Here we have your lanyard. Yep. I'll just disconnect this. So this is my lanyard so I can wear my power cab and walk around the layout yep. with no problem whatsoever. If I want to use it, I can either use it with the lanyard attached or I can disconnect that and then I've got a totally handheld wireless system. And it's tethered to this um, transmitter? It is, so this is the transmitter. Um, it contains a lithium ion battery that will last about six to eight hours in use on a layout, yep. so more than enough for the average operating uh, session. Charged by a USB-C. Indeed, um, I'll, if you have a look at the bottom of there, so you can see... for anyone familiar with mobile phones, Androids particularly, that is the charge point um, that you will be yeah. familiar with. And of course, USB-C now is ubiquitous. Even Apple has gone over to USB-C. Yeah. Just about everything you buy with a rechargeable battery now will charge with USB-C. I'd say that you are probably going to get more life out of that than... If you are operating a layout with a mobile phone, I would be surprised if you get six hours yeah. of operation out of yeah. a mobile phone without charging it yeah. and you do see a lot of people for example using the old iPods to right. control yeah. layouts with and they often have Vintage one in batteries. use and one yeah. plugged in and again you say after about two or three years that battery in that mobile phone because they use rapid charging technology yeah. the batteries can degrade quite quickly so this is a so slow charge this um, is a slow charge battery that means it'll last years and years and years and it won't wear out right uh, whereas mobile phones use rapid charge technology which obviously degrades the cells in the battery so this is a little bit more so just give us an idea difference between slow charge and rapid charge um, how many hours are we talking at to so get from a from a completely empty battery to a full charge. You want to charge this overnight. So this is an overnight charge to charge to full and then you get six to eight hours battery out of it. Okay. Unlike a modern QI charged mobile phone, for example, that will charge to full in about two to three hours. So you're being much more friendly on the batteries in here. Okay. And that means that the, the whole system will last an awful lot longer. You don't have to go out and buy new batteries. So this is now wire-free, connected up to the Aegis system there. So this is the Aegis system, it's a faceplate system. So what you see here is what you'll see on your railway. All the gubbins and electronics are hidden behind uh, and underneath the railway. Uh, on the back of here there's connection ports for more controllers if you want. There's also connection ports for Alpha if you want. Uh, on the front here what you can see in terms of the lights, this is the power light that's showing you that there's power to the railway. Uh, this is the reset button and light, so if a short happens or a problem happens on the railway, then this will be pulsing red, and you will press and hold that to reset power to the track. Here we have the two track outputs. Now, if you remember I said with the power cab you only have one track output, and you have to choose is that programming track output or is it a main output. Most people put a double pole, double throw switch or a rotary switch or something like that on there. What this does is it allows you to pick whether you want program or main at any time and you can literally switch between the two at whim. So that's really, really good. Uh, and then this is showing the status of the connection to the transmitter. You can see that this is pulsing at the moment. That is because I haven't sent any commands to the transmitter, so the transmitter is in low power mode to save battery. The moment I press a button on the transmitter, so if I press this button now, you'll see that goes steady and that is now operational. 
Oh, that's and quite if clever. you look so, up, you'll see the loco is now moving. Yep. Yeah. So presumably, in having that low power standby, you're using less power on your transmitter as well, because Correct. it's not expecting to listen to those signals coming that's back. That's right. And you see, I've stopped using it now, and this is now pulsing again to say that it's uh, waiting for another command. And this is what? Some sort of relay system to switch between... That's right, yes. Yeah. So there's a relay on there which will switch the output between main and programming track. Oh, OK. Both are then set up on your railway. So you have the main railway hooked up and the programming track hooked up. So, for example, on here we've got a bit of track here which is isolated. So we can put this section of track connected to the programming track output. When it's in main mode, then the whole railway, including the programming track section, is given full track power and control. Right. So you can drive the loco onto the programming track and then switch to program mode. When you do that, it cuts power to the rest of the layout and it current limits the programming track to make sure nothing more than minimal current goes to it. That means if you do have a loco with a problem on it, it's not going to shunt loads of power through to it and burn out the decoder. So this is our, one of the prototype units that we have here. So we have a lot of gubbins going on here. So let's have a look at the back. So we've got these three here. So these three switches turn on or off the connectors here, and they can be used to connect other handsets. Right. So you mean an, another NCE power cab could plug in, and then you can have two handsets on, you can have three handsets on, you can have four handsets on. That's absolutely so fine. So just to be clear, this mm -hmm. fascia, this, this system that you've got here, you can yes. only have one wireless controller with it. With this one, you can only have one wire-free controller. We will have a secondary thing. So you can see on here, we've got RF plus and ESP plus connectors on the side panel, and that will be for a secondary receiver, which means then you can have two wireless handsets, oh, for see. example. Right. So you can have more than one wireless, uh, and you can have up to six wired handsets. So you can connect to this to a faceplate, what we call the alpha panel, okay. or to an NCE uh, UTP panel, for example, and then you can plug in another handset there. Um, we've also got two connectors here, which are for alpha. So people who are familiar with our products will know our AEU product, which generates a digital address from a physical switch and then can change phys uh, digital point motors. We've also got, if I just switch that around, an alpha connector on the front, so you can use something like an alpha central. So we can overlay accessory commands onto the DCC bus using the alpha connectors there. You can see here the programming track and main track outputs, and these are quick plugs, so they're very easy. You can put them onto the end of the wire and then just push them into there. Uh, and then you can see the ESP plus and RF plus there, and those two are for future expansion, one for an additional wireless receiver, and the other for a wireless receiver for our ESP accessory control system. We will be having um, boxes which will encase this. So if you want an enclosed DCC system that sits on your desk, and then you just want the track wires coming out of the back of that, um, then this can be configured like that. So we will have some um, 3D print boxes which we're making up uh, that will enclose this. And then if you like the alpha meter, uh, if you like the alpha panel, which is just down the other end down there, so you can connect further handsets, we'll also have additional boxes that will mate up to the Aegis ah, box. So it's like a modular system. So it's a modular can, system okay. so that you can have the main control system and then the meter and then another switch panel, for example. So we'll do a blank one so you can make your own switch panel if you want. Uh, and then another uh, uh, control connector, you know, whatever you want, all the way down your fascia. How do I get my wires from one to the next, though? You'll be able to pass through between the cases. Oh, OK. So the cases come complete but when you connect another case on, it has a slide-off section at each end, oh, and right. then they just connect together. Uh, and then, of course, it has the, rel uh, the relevant connectors on the back for you to connect into oh, the see. Okay. Um, another important feature there is you can see here we have track voltage selector. That is, again, something that the NCE Power Cab doesn't have yeah. uh, when you buy that. 
So that allows you, for example, if you've got a very small end gauge layout, you might want the voltage to be lower. Mm -hmm. If you've got a large garden layout, you might want the track voltage to be higher. Uh, by default, when you buy this system, it will be set at 17 volts, but it's up to you as a user to change that to whatever you want. Um, and then the alpha meter will confirm that that is the correct voltage that's being put oh, out I by see. the system. Um, but we have got this very, very tightly managed so we're using a 24 volt DC regulated power supply to power the system. That means there's plenty of overhead there for you to be able to select between the options here, which are 14, 15, 17 and 18 volts. Right. So you can select which one you know, and you know that the output is always going to be at that level because you're never ever taxing the power supply that's on the other side of it. So high quality power supply, high quality components means a very well-controlled DCC bus. So the lanyard is to be worn with the NCE system. The boot actually fits onto any NCE power cab or pro cab. So if you've already got handsets, then this is a fantastic little bit of kit. We're gonna be selling this separately from the system. So if you're already an NCE user, but you don't want the full system, you can still get this as part of it. This gives you somewhere to you somewhere to place your cab when you're not using it, keeps it safe. It's rubberized around here, which means that you can't damage it if you drop it. And of course, the, the most um, fragile part of the power cab or pro cab is this liquid crystal display. You don't want to damage that, so this protects that should it fall on the floor. Um, fantastic little bit of kit, won't be expensive, and it'll be coming out the same time as the Aegis system. So what happens if I want a second wired unit? Okay, so yes, I've got my wireless unit here, but I want a second operator. My friend comes around with their power cab, or I'm a bigger layout and I want another operator. It's not a problem at all, so I will just connect that there. And here's my second power cab. I simply plug the power cab into the front of the unit, and you'll see that this power cab then turns on NCE power cab, and I now have this controller working and this controller working so I now have two cabs in there. If I wanted to add more, I've got the ports on the back of the system. I just transfer those ports with a cable to a plate on the front of my layout again, anywhere. So if you just turn around there, Howard, you'll see another plate at the end there. So I could plug another controller into that plate at that end of the layout. So I'm guessing strategically you would want these sort of fixed handsets around areas where you've got a yard where somebody's always going to need to be operating. Yeah. This gives you the functionality to perhaps follow a train around the layout. Um, it does. Um, the other unique feature it does with power cab is that power cab users will know that if they unplug the power cab during operation, the layout stops. Whereas if I control this train here, so I'm controlling the loco on the layout again as we were earlier. Uh, if I was to unplug this power cap here and go down here and plug it in down here, then actually operation of the layout continues. It doesn't actually turn off. So uh, can, I don't know if you can see the red LEDs on there. I don't think red comes out very well on video, but uh, perhaps if I change the direction of it, there we are. So you can see the lights are on on that loco with the cab plugged in. So I'm going to unplug the cab. You can see the lights are still on. The layout is still active. And I can plug the power cab in down at this end. So that's something you can't do with power cab as you've got it now, to be able to unplug and plug in at various different parts of the layout. Meanwhile, the layout actually stays live. Uh, Cost-wise for this unit, uh, this is $499.95. Um, you can place an order now and it will be delivered in January. Uh, and you can either pay one payment of $499.95 with us or with one of our retail partners, or we can take a 50% payment now and then a 50% payment when we deliver and that splits the cost a little bit. Um, in terms of value, I mean, that is just fantastic value for what it does and you've seen what it does. If you wanted to achieve that with standard NCE product, then you would spend an awful lot more than that. You'd need the wireless pro cab, you'd need the RBO2 transmitter receiver unit, 
you'd need the SB5 smart booster system and you need this auto switch as well as a circuit protector. So in order to get the same feature set that you've got on Aegis, you need to buy an awful lot of kit. Whereas Aegis, you just buy one product, plug it in and it works. Okay, just to show that the range is amazing on this thing, um, we're going to go in the next office like we said earlier on, uh, and we can look on CCTV and you'll be able to see the loco moving even though we're in the neighbouring office. Uh, so, follow me! Right, can you see on there, you can see the loco at the end of the layout. And I can make that move, there we go. So if you can't see, it's that tiny little dot there moving. I tell you what, Howard, I'm going to stay here. Okay. Why don't you go into the showroom and you can show the loco moving even though I'm in here. Let's do it. Well, there you go, everybody. I hope that's given you a bit of a tour of all of the functionalities of this all new system. And speaking with Richard, I know that there are a few more products that he's got up his sleeve. He's, I tried my best, he's not telling me, but uh, I'm sure sometime soon we'll find out. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching.